Here is a famously royal church, Westminster Abbey. A monastic foundation was established here in the 10th century with the patronage of the then king, Edgar. It's been known as the nation's coronation church since William the Conqueror was crowned here on Christmas Day 1066 and 37 monarchs have been anointed here since. The current Gothic building was constructed by another king, Henry III, in 1245. Over the centuries, it's been the venue for both royal weddings and funerals. And if that wasn't regal enough, Westminster Abbey has the unusual title of being a royal peculiar. And the person with the task of welcoming visitors to Westminster Abbey is Canon Jane Hedges. Jane, lovely to meet you. Lovely to see you, Hannah. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us here. Um, so what is a royal peculiar? Well, it's a funny name, isn't it, a it royal is. peculiar? <laughs> but it's peculiar in the sense of belonging to, as peculiar to. And this takes us back to the time of Elizabeth I. She re-established Westminster Abbey in 1560 after the dissolution of the monasteries. And so when she re-established the abbey, she re-established it as what's called a collegiate church. And so that's what we are today. We're responsible to the Queen outside the normal structures of the Church of England. So Jane, where are we now? We're in the shrine of Edward the Confessor. And there are very many special places in the Abbey, but this probably is the most special place. Edward the Confessor built the original Abbey back in the 11th century. And then in the 13th century, Henry III rebuilt the Abbey <laughs> in honour of, of Edward. Um, and so this will have been a place that's been visited by millions of pilgrims down through the centuries. And if you look closely, you'll see it would at one time have been covered in this gold mosaic. But over the years, the pilgrims have picked that mosaic <laughs> off. And that's why it's now uh, mainly just brown. Taking it away as souvenirs? Yes, I, su <laughs> I suppose so, yes. And there are, there are lots of other kings buried here, I can see. There are. They're all sort of gathered around this area. But also, in other parts of the Abbey, there are monarchs buried, about 17 altogether. And the Abbey's not just the burial place for royalty. It commemorates famous historical figures from the last thousand years of British history. So, Jane, where have you brought me now? This is the chapel of Henry VII, dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary, built during his reign. Now, I gather there are other, other monarchs buried around here as well. There are indeed, and they're actually in the side chapels of this main chapel. Um, on this side we have uh, Elizabeth I, the tomb of Elizabeth I, and on the other side the tomb of Mary, Queen of Scots. And their tombs really represent a very turbulent time in our history, um, a time of you know, horrible things happening mm. and terrible bloodshed. But Mary, Mary the I is buried underneath um, Elizabeth. And of course they were, they were great adversaries really uh, during their lifetime. But you'll notice in the floor in front of the tomb of Elizabeth, there's a, a plaque which talks about them being divided in life, um, but united in death. And, and I think that's a, it's a lovely um, sentiment really to think about them now being united but also perhaps a message to us in our world where there's you know so much division that we need to be working at being united thank you so much jane it's remarkable how well preserved the abbey is after constant use for many hundreds of years and it really is amazing to stand beside the royal tombs and feel the influence of the great monarchs who've shaped our history a legacy that lives on today